The topic is Taxation of Capital Gains under the Income Tax Act 1961. Before we get into this, I would like to give an overview of the various heads of taxation under the Income Tax Act 1961. There are five heads under which income of a taxpayer is computed. These are income from salaries, income from house property, profits and gains of business and profession, capital gains, and income from other sources. We will be discussing on one of the heads that is capital gains head. Let's start with the basic concepts under this head. Section 45.1 of the Income Tax Act 1961 is the charging section for taxability of income under the head capital gains. It says any profits or gains arising from transfer of a capital asset effected in the previous year shall be chargeable to income tax under the head capital gains in the previous year in which transfer took place. We will look at each of these concepts in detail. First, let's understand what does transfer mean. The common definition of transfer is an act of moving something to another. Under the Income Tax Act 1961, transfer has been defined under Section 2, Subsection 47 and it says, Transfer in relation to a capital asset includes and has provided with a list of activities. The point here to understand is that the definition of transfer is an inclusive definition which means that apart from what has been specifically listed here, it shall deem to include what could be normally meant as transfer in relation to a capital asset. Going back to the definition, it says transfer in relation to a capital asset includes sale, exchange or relinquishment of the asset. Now, Let's look into the meanings of these terms. Sale means exchange of a commodity for money. It means selling something. Hence, a sale takes place when the ownership in the property is transferred for a price. For example, Mr. A sells his house located in Mumbai to Mr. B for rupees 50 lakhs. This is a transaction of sale and would be considered as transfer of a capital asset. Also, another point to be brought to the notice is that sale need not be voluntary. For example, Mr. A owns a house property in Mumbai for which he had taken a loan of rupees 20 lakhs and now he is not able to repay the loan. The bank authorities decide to sell the house and recover their money. Hence, the sale of the house is an involuntary sale. That is, it would be sold even if Mr. A is not willing to sell it. So, if a capital asset is given to someone for a price, whether voluntarily or involuntarily, it is termed as sale and would would be hence considered as transfer chargeable under capital gains head of the Income Tax Act. The next term is exchange. It means an act of giving one thing and receiving another in return. 